Hey folks, Justin from Tackle Tactics. Stay tuned, on today's episode we are chasing flathead land based on soft plastics. Gonna give you the how, when, where and why of chasing flathead and the gear that we use to get hooked up chasing flathead from the bank. Fish on. All right, since I've been a young bloke, I've loved my flathead fishing with soft plastics. Whether it be walking the bank near the boat ramp or buying a cheap blow up boat so we can get across the creek and fish the other side and walk that bank where there's less pressure on the fish. It's a great way to target them. They love getting up in the shallows. It doesn't take a lot of water to hold a flathead. But the key thing that I've learned over the years is to stay light, stay mobile. So you'll see my kit that I've got here. I've got a TT tackle sling bag. I've got my net on there, my lip grips and other bits and pieces. But this pack is nice and light. I can throw it out of the way. I can get out there and I can fish those flats and walk, walk those banks. The last thing you want is a big, heavy, cumbersome backpack that looks like you're going to school and you've got all everything you own loaded in there. It's heavy, it's cumbersome, and it, it's a pain in the butt when you're trying to access gear for rigging and that sort of thing. So forget the backpack, grab your tackle sling bag, keep it light and get out there and hit those flats for fishing. The other thing, I carry one combo with me generally, and on this bag here you'll see we've got our rod holder so we can just drop it in there when we're rigging or when we're handling a fish and that sort of thing. I just take the one rod with me. It's very rare that you'll have an issue with that rod, but if you want to carry a second combo, I generally just leave it in the vehicle if I'm not far from where I'm walking and waiting because otherwise it too becomes a pain when you're trying to cast, handle fish, access your pack, all that sort of thing. So keep it simple. In here, we've got our jig heads, We've got a few plastics in the second pocket here and a leader and scissors, pliers in our pliers holder. In the main compartment here, I've got my drink bottle, some bug spray sunscreen, just the basics that you need to carry with you for that session out chasing flathead on the flats. All right, let's stop talking. Let's get out there and get stuck into a few fish. So when we're fishing land base, we want to keep it simple. We don't want to overload ourselves with everything in the shed. A really cool system that I've found for fishing plastics on the banks and wading the flats is the Headlocks HD Flathead Value Pack from TT. So these jig head value packs are excellent and there's a range of them available to suit different target species and also types of fishing, be it brim, flathead, inshore reef, uh, river and estuary. There's a pack to suit the type of fishing that you're doing or your target species. Cool thing, in here is a stack of jig heads hand-picked for chasing flathead. So when we open this pack up, we've got five different jig heads five of each so we've got plenty of jig heads for our session out here fishing the flats that's going to cover everything from deep edges and drop-offs with that 3830 right through to picking the drains and shallow edges with that 18 size one so plenty of jig heads there to cover everything we want to do flathead wise today paired up with that i've just grabbed four packets of z-man plackies we know z-man plastics are 10 times tough so one plastic is gonna last for a lot of fish. So I don't have to carry a ton of packets of plastics with me. I've got four here and I've covered all bases with these four. I've got a paddle tail, a jerk bait, a curl tail and a prawn imitation. So no matter what the fish are feeding on, profile size or the type of food they're eating, we've got something here that we can put on paired up with one of these jig heads to have a crack at these flathead from the bank. So nice simple kit and we are ready to rumble and get ourselves a few flatties off the edges and drains and out there around those weed beds and things. So let's get into them. Yep, yep, oh yep. Right, oh, that's the one we're looking for. So we've started fishing a quarter ounce Srio while the tide's up a bit. That uh, River and Estuary value pack has a 3830 and quarter 30 in there. So 3830 is great for those deeper edges, and that quarter 30 is great for the sort of shallower flats and edges like we've got here. That's a nice fish. I've just got that electric chicken color on here, nice bright color, classic color. Definitely a favourite for a lot of people. Get our net out there ready. Bit of flow here still from the tide dropping off the flats. That is a very nice fish. One of my favourite flathead plastics for sure, that quarter ounce 
uh, that three inch minnow, quarter ounce, three, quarter ounce three O is a great starting point for a jig head. And that is an absolutely beautiful flatty. Fishing on the higher stages of the tide as the water's dropping off the flats. So quarter three O, three inch minnows, electric chicken. Got our net ready, as you can see, nice and light, easy for moving around. I can drop my rod in here out of the way and we can have a look at that fish. So I'll drop the lip grips on. So the lip grips I've just got clipped on to one of the D-rings on my sling bag. And these are plastic floating lip grips. So even if you do drop them in the water, we can just grab them back out of the water and we're ready to go. So just see if I can get them in the mouth of this fish. This is a real nice flatty. And we are grips on. My net's leashed onto my bag, so I can just let, let my net drop back into the water. And have a look at that. Look at the color of that fish from living up on the sand here. That is a beautiful dusky flathead, but really nice sandy color from up on this sandy bottom. And there's that three inch minnows, quarter three O. So straight out of our flathead value pack, we've grabbed a quarter three O and that plastic and away we go. So brilliant for when the water's up. Nice two to four kilo combo. I'm just gonna put this in the water and sort myself out a little bit here. All right, we'll get the soft plastic out of this fish and we'll send it on its way. So that's a great little start to our land base session while the water's still up, running that heavier jig head with that larger profile plastic. When we got more water here, that larger profile plastic's easy for them to see. All right, let's send this nice flatty back in. There we go. She's kicking, she's away. Beautiful. Keen to get stuck into a few fish like these. For loads of tips and techniques, make sure you subscribe to our Tackle Tactics Inspire newsletter at tackletactics.com.au. Fish on. All right, that was a beautiful fish to start the session with when that water was up a bit. It's dropping off, as you can see, the banks are starting to appear more behind me. Uh, we're going to change it up now. You can see the scuffing on that leader there. So that leader is scuffed up from that fish's raspy mouth. And that's why we fish a little bit heavier when we're fishing land base, because that battle could take a little bit longer with that fish, could be a bit more sustained. So I'm running 15 pound leader today. I often run 10 pound, but land base 15 pound, a little bit more security. We're going to dig into our jig head pack and we're going to pull out something a bit different now. So that was a quarter three with the three inch minnows. We're going to stick with the quarter because there's still a fair bit of water here. But we've got a quarter 2-0 in here. Now, quarter 2-0 is a great size as well. Some people will rig that three inch minnows on a quarter. It's also great with a three inch slim swims. A bunch of plastics will fit it. Today, we are going to rig it with a 3.75 inch streaks, which is a jerk shad profile. So basically, I'm just tying that on there with a locked blood knot. I just use a locked blood knot to tie my jig heads on. Lubricate that knot with a little bit of saliva and we're ready to go. We've got our quarter. Still got that quarter ounce weight, but we're running the 2.0 head. And we're gonna put it in this guy. This is a Z-Man 3.75 inch streaks. So that breeze has kicked a little, blowing in our face. So the cool thing about this plastic is it's a bit smaller in the profile and it also doesn't have the, the action or the drag of the paddle tail. So that's gonna cast real long in the wind. So it's gonna give us long casts out here to cover water. And also in that flow, it's gonna get down there nice and quick because it doesn't have a lot of action in the tail. So I'm just gonna feed that guy nice and straight onto the jig head. 3.75 inch streaks. I've got the red bone glow color, which is one of my favorites. I also like the shiner is a nice color. Red bone glow has got a darker back silhouette sort of profile. Nice natural belly color that glows. So it's a very nice looking little bait fish, which we've seen a lot of little bait fish in the shallows. So that's why we're imitating a bait fish. So that minnows has the paddle tail, lots of action in the tail. This one here, we actually impart our own action by giving it a few flicks and twitches and hops. So that's the 3.75 inch streaks on a quarter two. Oh, let's throw it around and get ourselves a floody. All right, so we'll put the drone up and we'll give you a bit of a bird's eye view of this area that we're fishing so you can understand the changing of the plastics and what we're actually doing. So it's a large expanse of flats with a couple of drains coming off the flat. So basically we're currently standing in the drain and the water is flowing out as it drops. And there's a drop off here into a bit of a drain. So that's why we started with our quarter ounce heads because we've got this flow. 
So we've got a fair bit of flow here and we want to get those plastics down on the bottom and throw a big long cast as well. As that water on the flats here starts to dry up, we'll basically lose that flow and it'll be more about getting those jig heads a bit lighter, fishing a bit more subtle and picking the pockets and gaps in the weed and the little deep sections to find those flatheads. So you can see epic expanse of flats, nice drains and flatties love hanging around drop offs, drains, weeds, rubble, all the sort of stuff we've got here on this flat that we're fishing. Yep, yep, oh yeah, there we go. Oh, that feels all right too. That feels all right. in the shallows on that bait. What are you? Are you my flat friend? When you do get a flatty like this in the shallows on a, on a shallow bank, when I'm wading I use the net. If we're going to land him on the bank I just use the momentum of the water and the fish to bring the fish up onto the bank. So use the net when you're wading out in the water but we're gonna, we're gonna use the momentum of the fish here and the water in front of him to bring him up the bank. And that is a beautiful flatty. What a crack of fish. Oh, what a beautiful flatty that guy is. So you can see when we're landing that one, when I'm out wading on the flats, I'll use the net to land them. You can still wander out and land them out in that situation there, but otherwise you can get that rod tip down and use that momentum of the fish and the water that they're pushing in front of them to slide them up onto the bank, whichever you prefer. But that guy has scoffed that. He was in there in amongst the bait. What a great fish. Wow, that's right down the gob, that. All right, we just give him a bit of a wash there, a bit of a rinse. So you can see that's a nice flatty in the 50s. We've got him on the grip, on the grip. So lure's still in his gob there. So for flicking soft plastics off the bank like this, we're just running a two to four kilo rod. So that's a TT Black Mamba. I love the Black Mamba. It's a 40 ton Torre carbon rod. So it's a nice punchy rod for punching casts when you are land based. And I've got a 1000 ITX on there. So that's a, a beautiful little smooth reel loaded up with eight pound braid and we're fishing that 15 pound leader because we are fishing off the bank and these guys have got a habit of chewing through leaders so there you go nice fish in the 50s whoa he's fired up in the 50s on that quarter 20 3.75 inch streak so that's the jerkbait profile for a long cast and getting down there quick so far so good on our z-man plackies and our tt flathead value pack. All right, we'll just pop that jig head out. That's that Headlocks HD jig head, brutally strong, black nickel, mustard, chemically sharpened hook on there. So that's a, oh, he's fired up, he's away. Look at that, beautiful fish. Found the bait, found the fish, matched it with that beautiful little Z-Man 3.75 inch streaks twitched in the shallows. Fish on. All right, that was pretty cool. We got those couple of fish on that quarter 20, 3.75 inch streaks. We're gonna dig back into our flatty value pack. So in here, we our 3830 we didn't use. We saved that for our deeper edges. We used our quarter 30 on that first fish, quarter 20 when we downsized the plastic, and we got our uh, flatty and also a trev. And that leaves us a couple more jig head options still in here. The water's dropped right out, so we're going to downsize our jig head to a lighter weight again. We've got a 1 6th 1 0, and we've got a 1 8th in a 1. So those two are perfect for shallow drains, shallow edges. For all your smaller plastics like 2.5 inch prawns, 2.5 inch SD grubs, the slim swims, and those other sort of smaller favourites. So we might go, we still want to throw a decent cast. This edge is quite shallow, so we're going to grab the 1 6th in a 1 0 and we're gonna pair it up with a two and a half inch prawns. The water's pretty dirty, so we're gonna go with one of those UV colors. We're gonna run the blood oil color in that 2.5 inch prawn. So we'll make that change and see if we can get ourselves one more flatty to finish off the session. All right, folks, you may be able to see this depression in the bottom here, and that's in the shape of a flathead. 
So that's what we call a flathead lie. That's where the fish has been buried in the bottom, waiting to ambush food. So that's a great indicator that there'll be fish on this bank. So when you're walking the edges, you know, whether you're wading up or walking up on the flats and stuff, keep an eye out for those flathead lies, because that could be a sign that there's fish in the area. So it's probably worth a few more casts. We'll keep casting. We'll see if we can find this guy. Yep, yep, yep. Oh. Oh. What are you? Are you a stingray jagged in the top? Are you a sand crab? What are you? You are a sand crab. Thought you were. He's an eater size. He's dinner. <laughs> Everything eats a prawn. <laughs> oh, what are the chances? Twitch, twitch. Boom. <laughs> sand crab jagged in the claw. He's probably pretty close to legal sand crab, but we're going to send him back. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, what did we get that time? That guy had a couple of goes at it, not a, not a big flatty, but that's pretty cool. We've switched to our prawn on our lighter head, just letting that prawn waft down into the water there. This guy was up stirring up the bait, made our cast, got him. There we go. Lighter head, flicked into the shallows, little flatty on the Z-Man 2.5 inch prawns in blood oil colour. That's, um, yeah, great fun. You can have a lot of fun with that gear that we're running. So our third flatty of the day, he's the smallest. We've got those two nice ones. Oh, he's off. Righto, so there we go. How cool is that? You know, we've had a, had a crack a little session fishing that flathead value pack so a bunch of jig heads in there we grabbed a few packets of plastics and we've had an awesome session landed two nice flatties and this little guy and also a trevally so finished with that little prawns flicking it around so great fun not an expensive way to get out and chase a few fish we haven't lost a, a jig head or a plastic so we can pretty much get up in the morning and go go and do the same again and get stuck into a few more oh see you buddy he's fired up that guy all right, folks, there we go. What a cool session chasing flatties land-based. We got those two nice fish and a smaller flatty as well and that trevally, so great fun for sure. If you wanna check out all the gear that we used today, make sure you check out our breakdown of our gear in our land-based flathead kit video. So that'll, that'll give you a lot more info and techie stuff on what we've used today. So how cool was that? Great session, we kept it light, just grabbed that flathead value pack, a few plackies in our sling bag, out there and chase a few fish so easy for you guys to do not expensive and you can get out walk some banks and catch some fish we love the last half of the run out tide and that start of that run in is prime time when those flatties are hanging on that edge so get out there and give it a go fish on <laughs>